Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello and welcome to GV247, the Global Vision Channel. Now, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you last week, but I know many of you appreciated a wee peek at my beloved husband, Stuart, who, despite his heavy workload at present, stood in for me at very short notice. Now, moving on, we're launching a new channel called Focus on Israel with our friends at the Israeli Embassy, amongst many others around the world. And it's a very exciting new venture for those who believe that the Bible is God's word and that it centres on the Mashiach, the Anointed One, the Saviour, Christ, who comes to the Temple in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel and the centre of the world. And if you don't believe me, look at your atlas. And our other good news is in regard to our studio having been accepted as a professional broadcast distributor and content provider. As Stuart mentioned last week, we're reaching a global audience on Amazon Prime TV with our 12-part discipleship course called The Lamplight Project, as well as our professional documentaries and feature film. And the latest news is that our Does My Life Have Meaning? It's a 60-minute programme. It's now airing on there as well. And it's wonderful news, particularly in the troubling times that people live in today. So if you have Amazon Prime television, and you're in the US or UK, you'll be able to watch this for free on there. Now, before we move over to Brother Gideon Levitum, who is talking about the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, let's go on to our next verse in Matthew 24, which is verse 21. Jesus says, For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. So again, we need to look at the word then. Then there will be great tribulation. He has just warned those in Israel that when they see the major sign, the abomination of desolation being set up in the newly rebuilt temple. Now remember, the temple is still to be rebuilt, so it's not an immediate warning. They are to, be, they are to flee without looking back or taking anything with them. So now he's explaining why. There will be great tribulation. Now, the Greek word used here is thalipsis, which is also translated as affliction, a terrible pressure or burden that crushes. It is anguish and distress, persecution. And that is something that the Jews have been accustomed to for centuries. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no and never will be, Reminds me of when we were visiting Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem to meet with officials there in order to purchase footage and pictures for the Cup of Trembling Countdown to Armageddon video that we were making at the time. And I wandered off to be by myself for a short while with a, a real pressing urgency that the Lord wanted to draw my attention to something in particular and where he quickened this very scripture to me. What is going to happen in these days to come will be worse than even the Holocaust perpetrated by the Nazis. Now that's hard to believe, but even in the Revelation we see that there's so much worse to come, including a terrible earthquake which will hit Jerusalem. And we know that there is a great fault line that runs right through the country. But this is going to be at a time when Israel has let her guard down. A nation without borders who thinks they are finally living at peace with her neighbours when there is no peace, as Ezekiel 13, 16 and Jeremiah 6, 14 state. Now there's much to happen before that comes to pass, but the warnings that lead up to this event are all there. And when we start to look at this chapter in the Bible, we agreed at the beginning that these signs have begun. So we'll look at verse 22 next week, where there is some hope held out. But now it's time to go to Brother Gideon. Shalom, my dear friends. Our privilege is to continue with the study of the parables that our Lord Yeshua, Jesus, our Mashiach, our Messiah, have uh, shared with the people of Israel when he was here upon the face of this earth. We have studied already quite a few parables uh, that are found in the early chapters 
of the Gospel of Matthew, and uh, in this session, we have arrived to the 13th uh, chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, in which uh, we are going to look over uh, the parables that are called the uh, uh, parables of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you will notice as we are going to look at these uh, parables, specifically in Matthew chapter 13, of course they are mentioned again in Mark chapter 4 and in Luke chapter 8, uh, these parables are unique. The reason that they are unique is simply because Yeshua, Jesus, our Lord, and our Mashiach have spoken these parables, these parabolo, these meshalim, specifically to the ones in Israel who did not receive him, the multitude who did not accept him as the Messiah. And the purpose behind it was that these parables will hide from them the truths concerning the kingdom of God. That's why they are called in scripture the mystery kingdom of God. In Hebrew, they are called Mamlechet Elohim Hasodit. You notice that in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13, in the first uh, uh, two and a half verses, we read, The same day, which day was that? That was the Shabbat day. That was the same day that he, Yeshua, healed uh, many in the uh, land of Israel. This is the very same Shabbat day in which he called in chapter 11, to many in Israel, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That was the same day that his disciples walked with him through the fields and uh, collected food, picked up food, and the Pharisees say unto the Lord Yeshua the Messiah, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Shabbat day. That was the very same Shabbat day in which, if you remember, we have already looked at that in the previous verses uh, and the previous uh, messages, uh, that at the same Shabbat day he healed a man which had a hand which was withered. At the same Shabbat day he healed them all, the multitude, many that came to him. At the same Shabbat day, he was in the land of Israel. He healed the one that was blind and dumb and the one that was possessed with a demon. And it was the same Shabbat day in which the Pharisees rejected his Messiahship and said that Yeshua, the Messiah, healed and done all what he have done on that Shabbat day in the power of Satan, which is really known here in Matthew chapter 12 as Baal Zvuv, the Lord of the Fly. It was at the very same Shabbat day, my dear friend, that Yeshua has a you might say, was finally rejected by the spiritual leader of our own people, Israel. And notice what he said. He said unto these ones who rejected him that they have committed the sin against the Holy Spirit. It says in chapter 12 and verse 31, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And that was the time that Israel, our people as a nation, some 2,000 years ago, a rejected the final rejection of the messiahship of Yeshua, who offered himself as the king of Israel, the king of our nation Israel. And you remember what John Yohanan Amadbil said. 
that uh, prepare because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Sadly, until today now, for the last 2,000 years, nationally, Israel as a nation uh, still do not recognize the Messiahship of Yeshua. And so now for the last 2,000 years, beloved friends, our people, the Jewish people, are still partially blinded to the Messiahship of Yeshua. They forfeited the uh, kingdom that was offered unto Israel, and the kingdom of heaven was postponed to the second coming of the Messiah. And so when we come into chapter 13, where we have these uh, eight parables that are called the uh, parables of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. These eight, there's another one in Mark chapter 4, together they are forming a cluster of parables that deal with what is known to be as the mystery a kingdom of heaven. Now I would like to speak with you a little bit, beloved friends, of the importance of understanding this expression, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, before we actually going to go into these uh, eight parables found in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 13. I think that will help you. It will help all of us to understand what does it mean, the kingdom in Hebrew, Malchut, and the kingdom of God, the kingdom that God would rule, and then it says specifically in the Gospel of Matthew, the kingdom of heaven. You notice what we do read again and again, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, as we uh, learned together from the uh, Gospel of Matthew earlier. If you remember when John the Baptizer, Yohanan Hamadbil, uh, uh, was preaching among our people, the Jewish people in Israel. It says in Matthew chapter 3, in those days came Yohanan Hamadbil, John the Baptizer, uh, uh, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, notice that, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, if you will go to the Gospel of Mark, you notice in that uh, in the Gospel of Mark, we also see uh, John the Baptizer is presenting himself uh, before Israel and presenting uh, the Messiah before Israel. And John the Baptizer in the Gospel of Mark and in the Gospel of Luke, he used this expression, the kingdom of God, rather than the kingdom of heaven. Luke as well present before us the very same kingdom, but using the expression, the kingdom of God, rather than the kingdom of heaven. Why must you present the kingdom of heaven while Mark and Luke present the kingdom of God? Basically, it is the same kingdom. The kingdom is a kingdom and that belong to heaven, that belong to God. It simply means that it is a, a God is ruling over the affairs of men. Everything here in this world belongs to God. He is the king. He is the creator. He is the one that will establish a kingdom here in this world in which he will rule. And so God simply, when we say the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, we simply mean the same thing. Matthew used the kingdom of heaven. Mark and Luke used the kingdom of God. And it is very interesting because we... Uh, who grew up in Jewish homes in Israel, we, uh, in our conservative homes, we were, we were always taught not to use the word God or not to use the word Yehovah or Jehovah and to replace it by another word. So every time when we came to a passage in the Hebrew scripture that says, uh, 
and the Jehovah said unto his people Israel, we always uh, replaced it with the word Adonai rather than the name, the sacred name of God. We have been taught that because our spiritual leaders uh, in Israel taught us that not to use the name of the Lord in vain. Right or wrong, the thought and the motive behind it is to be careful because we are creatures and God is the creator. We are his people and he, are, he is our God. And therefore to be very uh, careful not to mention the name of the Lord carelessly. Well, Matthew shows us, because Matthew was writing to our Hebrew people, to our Hebrew nation, and Matthew have the Jewish audience in mind. So every time when you read the kingdom uh, uh, in uh, the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew used the word the kingdom of heaven, Malchut HaShamayim, Malchut HaShamayim. While Mark and Luke was right, were writing to the nations of the world, uh, to the Greeks and to the Romans, and to them the expression was the kingdom of God. But that's the same thing, beloved friend. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, it simply means that God is ruling over the affairs of men. It is his kingdom, he is the ruler, he is in charge, and therefore it is belonging uh, to him. Well, many times, even in the Hebrew language, instead of saying God or using his uh, name that was given in Exodus chapter 3, we use the word Hashem, the name, or Hashemaim, the heavens, rather than the word God. And so in the Gospel of Matthew, we have arrived to chapter 13. In chapter 12, beloved friend, Yeshua, the Messiah, was rejected by the spiritual leaders of Israel, and they forfeited the, uh, uh, the promise, the blessing of the Messianic kingdom. And now in chapter 12, he said this sad and very strong word in the uh, end of the 12th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Wherefore I say unto you, verse 31, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, Ben Adam, the Messiah himself, it shall be forgiven unto him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, nor in the world to come. And so we learn, beloved uh, friends, that, uh, that this is what is called the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And here Israel, the promised kingdom to our people of Israel, the messianic kingdom, was forfeited to a future a time in uh, the second coming of the Messiah. But let's move along here, because when we have arrived to chapter 13, we notice that it says here, listen to the first two and a half verses of uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. The same day, this is the same Shabbat day when Israel, the vast majority of Israel did not accept the Messiahship of Yeshua, went Jesus out of the house and he sat by the seaside. This is interesting because even the expression out of the house, this is the house of Israel. By the seaside, it is where it's, the sea often represents all the nations of the world. And you can see now that the Lord Yeshua the Messiah is going to begin to deal now with something new that was going to begin. Why? Because Israel, the nation, did not accept him at his first coming. Well, while they did not know it, God knew it, as he foretold this by the prophets, that at the first coming of the Mashiach, Israel as a nation will not accept the Mashiach. Now, that age in which you and I live in, 
of what is known to be the church age, the assembly age, for the last 2,000 years, beloved friends, Israel as a nation is still scattered, most of our people. The temple is not rebuilt as yet. The promise of the Mashiach to establish the kingdom is not yet established. And 2,000 years passed by. Now the Lord Jesus, who is God, the Son, he knew that. Because he knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. And here we learn from this 13th chapter how the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, teaches, teaches the the followers of him. Of course, the earlier followers were Jewish believers like the apostles and many others. Later on, Samaritan. And then later on, beyond Samaria, the, the, the whole world, the gospel had been uh, preached in the whole world. But here we see that at the same day went Yeshua out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into the ship, and he sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Beloved friend, listen to this. And he spake many things to them in parables, in Meshalim, in parabolos, saying. And here, beloved uh, friends, we learn this amazing lesson that now the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, speaking many parables to the multitude. We will learn very quickly that the vast majority of the multitude in this section were not a multitude that necessarily followed him and accepted him as the Mashiach. But they followed, they listened to what he said because he was speaking differently than the Pharisees and the Sadducees were speaking as they were teaching uh, the nation of Israel. Of course, to remind you that up to this time, we still have already studied the parable of the salt, the parable of the lamp, the parable of the speck and the log, the parable of the pearl and swine, the parable of the ask, seek, and knock, the parable of the narrow and the wide gate, the parable of the tree and its fruits, the parable of the wise and foolish builders, the parable of the new cloth in an old garment, and the parable of the divided kingdom. Yeshua, as it was very customary, spoke in parables, but here we have an addition uh, element of the parables, and we would know them as we call them the parables of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, but even further, the parable of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. These expression mysteries have been added to these expressions, the parables. The word mystery simply means a secret, something that is not known before. And the only, only way to know these mysteries is as the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, will reveal it unto his people. But you notice if you read a little further in Matthew chapter 13, you notice that the disciples came to him in verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And notice the answer of Yeshua. He answered and he said unto them, Because it is given unto you, these are the believers in Yeshua, the disciples and those who followed him in, in the land of Israel in his first century when he was here on earth. He said it given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them, here's these who are who did not believe from among the people of Israel, unto them it is not given. So, in other words, beloved uh, uh, brothers and sisters, the reason that Yeshua has spoken the in parables concerning the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, it was in order to hide these 
truth of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven from the unbelievers, but to reveal it unto those that believe on him. This is very, very interesting. And I would like just to mention one more verse before we're going to end uh, this session. In Mark chapter 4, we read, this is the same, uh, uh, the mysteries of the kingdom were taught here as well in the Gospel of Mark and chapter uh, 4. We read, notice in the end of the uh, chapter, Mark uh, chapter 4, we read there, but without, verse uh, uh, 34, but without parable, spake he not unto them, and when they were alone with his disciples, he expounded all things to his disciples. This is Mark 4 and verse 34. So beloved brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, begin now in Matthew chapter 13 to speak in parables. And these eight parables in Matthew chapter 13 are called the parables of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We're going to continue in the next session to speak uh, just a little more to introduce these uh, parables before we actually going to go to one parable at a time. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, Gideon. We really do look forward to part two next week. So please help share the good news about the Lamplight Project and Does My Life Have Meaning on Amazon Prime TV as their excellent outreach and teaching presentations. It's just to benefit the body and those who don't know the Lord. Until next week, God bless. This is GV247.TV bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion, and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series. A powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.TV, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. This fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever-skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, 
please do not hesitate to get in touch. <laughs>